Hello <rire> T'es déjà très glamour, hein Dans tous les... <rire> I try to. So, uh, could you tell me, you opened your gallery in 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, how was it? Uh, because you have already the experience of the crisis, not the same one. Tell me, how was it? We opened in 2008, uh, which was, the, um, as everybody knows, was the the moment where the stock market crashed in New York, was a huge recession in the in the in the stock market and therefore ev everywhere in the world, uh, it was as it was more of an accident because we opened our space um, uh, when we got to meet Castillo Corrales, which was an artist and curator run um, run space, and uh, it was a no profit. It was a no profit that needed to have some help from dealers to support it. And then we met and we decided to um, to just share the space with them. So it was a very small space, 25 square meters in Belleville, uh, a, a space that was hosting um, a new publishing house, um, um, this uh, non-profit gallery and our gallery by Nietzsche Herlin. So it was sort of like a non, uh, really non-orthodox kind of way to open a gallery. But for the reason, I think we got a feedback really, 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 really fast. You know, as soon as we open, I think the the same year we opened, we got into Basel and the statement section, and we got into Artissima, the fair, and and we really got accepted right away. It was a weird moment. Nobody wanted to open a gallery, of course, and even less in Paris because it was not considered at the time as a. Um, a marketplace for art um, and I think that's the reason why it worked actually because no one else was having that idea of opening a space in uh, in Paris. But the prices of your artists were, were very low in that period, no? They were very loyal? No, low. Oh, low. Oh, the price, yes, of course. It was like uh, at the beginning of their career, uh, actually I think we gave all of our artists their very first uh, gallery show, which means that before they nearly didn't exist in the market. But I think that was the right product at the right moment in the right city. And it worked really right away. We actually, I think we sold out most of our shows in the first two years. And you, and you were working with Oscar Toison, for example, who yeah. is very yeah. successful today. Not working anymore with you, but very successful. Yeah, very successful artist. He was actually one of the founders of the nonprofit space that was um, sharing the gallery with us. So it was sort of an um, um, interesting relationship based on, uh, on this need of doing something different in Paris, you know? Interestingly enough, he's American, he relocated to Paris uh, at the time, but also me, I was coming from New York, I'm Italian, and Alexander Herling um, is German, as you know, and we were all like foreigners in Paris that wanted to do something different. And, you know? and if we speak about tomorrow, mm -hmm. how do you consider the market could uh, evolve? Tomorrow, as uh, tomorrow, um, hmm. or today, <laughs> considering the situation, I mean, as so far, I think everything is really blurry, and we don't know what's going to happen next. Depends on the on the on the evolution of the the epidemic. I do think we are going back to maybe uh, artists that work more on the content, uh, obviously. Uh, because there would be less budgets for production, it would be less spectacular, it would be, uh, in my opinion, a little bit deeper. Uh, I'm not saying that this recession and this crisis will bring anything good. Uh, I'm just saying that things will change in a more, um, maybe uh, interesting and deep way. And also relationships between galleries and dealers, uh, and uh, sorry, galleries and artists will change radically. Uh, we probably are going back to a, um, a, a relationship that is based more on doing something interesting and that helps to reconstruct the situation, you know. Um, and less speculation on the trendy new names of the art. Well, I think that, yeah, speculation, which was never, 
unfortunately or fortunately, something that belonged to our gallery. Uh, we never thought about speculating anyways um, uh, or growing in a certain way. Uh, so I think, yes, definitely there will be less speculation. Uh, artists will not overproduce for the simple reason you're not going to have the same amount of uh, demand that you had probably like a year ago. Uh, younger artists will not uh, cost so much, you know, that the, their price will not go up so fast anymore. And I think in a way it's very healthy um, for the artists and for the dealers and for the relationship between, you know, the, the, the artist and uh, the dealers. Um, I'm more worried about this particular recession compared to the one in 2008. I think the situation is very uh, difficult for young artists, just a simple like day on a daily basis, you know, how they're going to make enough money to have a studio and produce and su just simply survive, actually. So that's that's something I'm extremely worried about for this recession. And the second concern I have is this like crazy race of nationalism and, and you know uh, I don't know today I got an, an, I got like a petition they have somebody asked me to sign a petition for Italy to for Italy to leave the European community you know so I think we have to go back as galleries and artists to our intellectual responsibility you know we have to rebuild you know trust between human beings, you know, and people from different places. So I think it's uh, that would be the priority right now. But uh, I'm concerned about the artists. Like, I really don't know how they can possibly produce right now. And, you know, we're nothing without them, you know. I can't be a gallery without artwork in my gallery. <laughs> I mean, to do it, you For know? sure. And I think that's a priority right now. I, I feel like whoever is involved in the market or the system or the you know the art world we should all like question how we, how can we allow them to to produce and you know i'm thinking maybe i should use my space as artist studios now you know do less exhibition but maybe they can work there i'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about different solutions but if things they get really bad i think that's that's probably a possibility and of course developing a lot of the online platforms and all those you know uh, new ways of showing art. Yeah. Merci, Daniele. Bye-bye. Rien. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>